Amazon has just released a new AI code editor named Kiro. It's in public preview and free to use. In this video, I'll show you how to use it and also give you the three reasons I think it has a bit of a leg up over its competitors. Other VS Code forks like Cursor and Windsurf. Let's go. I'm at the Kiro website. If we look at pricing here, it's gonna say Kiro continues to remain free with reasonable limits during the preview period. And because this utilizes Claude 4, this is a really good opportunity to use it for free. But you will notice there's no way to download from here. All you can do is join the waitlist. Definitely add your name to the list. But I'll show you a way, no guarantees or anything, that you might be able to get access right away. If you're on a Mac, you could use Homebrew with the command brew install Kiro. So you can see here that it downloaded the latest version of Kiro installed it and moved it to my applications folder. So, so Kira is an actual application. It's not just a website or a web app you go to. It's actually a VS Code fork. So this will get you that app installed on your computer. From there, you can log in with either Google account, GitHub account, or AWS account. There's probably an equivalent for Windows. I'm not too familiar with that. And by the time you see this, you might just be able to download it from the website. So no guarantee, such as something that works for some people. So I've launched Kiro. And one of the reasons I think it's got a bit of a leg up on some of the AI code editors, like Cursor, for example, is because when you build, it actually walks you through the software development lifecycle. We see this here on the first page. I'm in an empty directory, and it lets you either vibe code here or spec. I'm gonna choose spec, and then I'm just gonna put in some rough notes about what I wanna build. And so at this point, you can put it in the technologies if you know it, and if not, just let AI tell you how to build it. But in this case, I'm gonna ask it to build Next.js application. I'm gonna use authentication by a product called Clerk, which I've had a lot of success with in the past. And for a database, I'm gonna use Neon. And I want to build an application that I can add retail locations to, and then use those retail locations to publish a map on a website. So you can see all the stores that my product's listed in. So now the first thing it's gonna do, because we chose that spec mode, is it's gonna build a requirements file. And this is much more in line with my experience in software development in real life at a real corporation. I do this a long time. And you never just start vibe coding, you always start with at least some level of documentation. It's broken down my notes from my requirements very nicely, numbered the requirements, even made user stories, acceptance criteria for all of them. It's broken it down to seven unique requirements. So that's great. So now you can just say move to design phase. So after requirements, now it's gonna take you to design phase where it's gonna build a design document for you. And like I was saying, like if you're in a corporate environment, for example, you always go through these steps. And even if you're doing an agile workflow, you still have at least user stories and some basic documentation before you get started. And there you go, now let's put this a design document. It even included like little mermaid diagrams with all the components, which is really cool. It gives the technology stack, it defines all our core components, even our API calls, everything's in here. This is really good. That design document looks great. Now you can just click move to implementation plan. Now it's gonna take that design document and break it down into individual tasks to actually do the coding now. Now it's built our implementation plan or our task list. One thing I find really cool about Kiro is it's turned this, what is basically a markdown file, into an interactive wizard. So I can actually click here, start task, and it's actually gonna launch it for me. So it makes it better than just having a, just a normal markdown file. It really sets it up so you can track exactly what's going on. I also like how it links requirements back to all the different implementation tasks. Now that it's done all that planning, we should be able to have a much better end product with our first iteration. So now you can just implement all the tasks in the order. And then the really nice thing is after a task is complete, you can actually say view changes. That's gonna bring up a window that shows you for all the files it changed, all the different changes it made. You can also use the view execution button. It takes you right back to the chat to where it did that task. Then you can review if something went wrong, you can know exactly where in the chat the changes started. And you'll notice here it is using Claude Sonnet 4.0 totally for free, which is pretty amazing. It has been the slow side right now, so you have to be a bit patient with it. I'm gonna let it cook away in the rest of these tasks and see what it gives me. It did take a while to get through all those tasks, but once I did and I got the API keys entered for all the integrations, I have working application here. I can sign in with Google and I can search for businesses, add them to my list of locations and stores them all in my Neon database. In the end, this worked out much better if I, than if I just started vibe coding. That spec mode is really good. And the second feature that I find Kiro does really well is around how they implemented hooks. So in Kiro on the left sidebar, if you go down to this ghost icon, this is the Kiro section, you have a whole section for agent hooks. And what hooks are is a way to monitor for events to happen. And then when those events happen, do something. Let's add a new hook here. And the reason I really like how Kiro did this is they let you natural language describe what you want the hook to be. So you can probably think of all kinds of use cases. You could do a security scan after you update your code. You could run your test suite. 
In this case, I'm going to try to update my documentation. So actually, they give you a little shortcut here to say update my documentation. And what it says is on change on these files, ask the agent to make changes to docs in either the readme or if there's a specific docs folder update there too. So now with that prompt, Kira's actually built the hook for us. It knows we're in a TypeScript file, so it's looking for those. It adds all the different file paths to the watch list and gives instructions to the agent. Now that Kira's done an update to one of the TSX files for a prompt I did, now we can see the agent hook running automatically. Let me see here actually completely rewritten to provide a confirmation overview of the application, including the new admin panel access method via the gear icon, which is what I have prompted it to do. This is so cool. And the final reason I think Kiro has a big step up versus some of its competitors like Cursor or Windsurf is by who makes it. So it's made by AWS, which is from Amazon, Amazon Web Services. Amazon also has a big shareholder in Anthropic, which is the maker of the Claude 4 models. And then Amazon has so much money, obviously, to spend on AI. They can really invest in Kiro. And the money spent on the API tokens from Anthropic, they're going to get back anyway as part of that profit from that company. So that is kind of a nice circle there. And that's the problem like Cursor and Windsurf are kind of running into is that since Claude 4 is the best model, at least right now, for AI coding, everyone just wants to use that. And that's really where all the value is in the, in the IDE. And we saw this dramatically shown recently with Windsurf. When Anthropic released Claude 4, they didn't let Windsurf use it right in the IDE. You have to use your own API credits as a user, so you get to pay Anthropic directly. And when that happened, use of Windsurf went way down, obviously. So they're kind of beholden to Anthropic is the problem. And Amazon, AWS, and Kiro is not going to have that problem. So I think it's going to be around for the long term. Double-edged sword, of course, because that is a lot of concentration, just a few massive tech companies. But it is what it is right now. And as a consumer, I think Kiro has got a bright future. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Everything to do with AI software development, I'm going to cover it here. I hope you're having an amazing day. I'll talk to you in the next one.